out as a street photographer taking black and white photographs that captured his vision. According to Saho, which is South African history online, his curiosity with photography began when one of his sisters gave him his, his first camera. In 1985, he joined Afropix following a period where he worked in a dark room which grew which grew into him becoming a news photographer. In 1987, Saho reported he joined the New Nation newspaper. Then in 1988 to 1998, he worked as a documentary photographer and researcher for the African Studies Institute Oral History Project at University of Wattersrand. Um, at this moment, I would like to call a, a family rep representative to come and say a word. My father's passing away is a great loss, but how do we take measure of this? The world has not lost the documentary photographer. The photographs and the documents are there to be examined and re-examined. These were the gifts he generously shared. So how do I take measure of his loss? So how do I measure the loss? As a child, I spent time with him in the dark room, watching him carefully tease light from photo paper and a chemical solution. He told me how a prism works, how it splays light into separate parts. His passing has been a spectral event, he went from a single source of light, so bright and overwhelming, into individual elements in all of us. Just, just like seeing light enter a prism, I expected the show, but I cannot disavow the awe. My mother has his dogged determination. I see his contemplative, soft-spokenness in one cousin, his mirth in another. I appreciate some of his instincts in his friends and peers. The, integer the interrogation of the frame by his students and mentees is there in their works. My siblings have his forthrightness. As a family, we physically walk and get to where we are going at a blistering pace. But all these elements don't make the whole. What is gone with him is his gait that made the way he approached an event, the stamp of his actual laugh. Gone with him too is his melancholy, his loneliness, all of his, intel his intangible facets that colored his life and found expression in how he never offered a casual glance. I can say this, my father saw more than he looked. Yesterday, surrounded by family, I took a final lesson from him. In a small chapel, in observance of his last wishes, he gave me one last insight, that I should live my life in the pursuit of the dignity of others. The way my father signed off at the end of a communication was with one word, care. He meant to convey as many meanings of it as possible, mostly take care. Take care of yourself, take care of others, take the care that's been given to you. I'm grateful for the care my mother gave to my father in his last days, the care of family and friends around us. <laughs> take care, man. <laughs> the care of his doctor and attended physicians, the care countless people have given over these last few years few years. Let's take care of each other. Care. Sorry about that. Thank you very much. Take care. Um, I would like to call a representative from the photo workshop to say a word or two. <laughs> okay. So on behalf of the Market Photo Workshop, we would like to extend our condolences to the family of Ntate San Tumufuking. We also sympathize with the South African photographic community, in particular, who has lost a giant. We've lost a photographer who furthered another vision of this country in the afterlife of apartheid. Ntati Santu left us with visions we must still open our eyes to. 
showing us what a photographer really is. He showed us that a photographer is a vulnerable witness to that which we can't always see. He showed us that a photographer is a visionary into the past, the present, as well as into the future at the same time. He showed us that a photographer is also a writer, not just of light, but also of ideas. The appetite of his curiosity has left us food for thought for generations to come. This is what his legacy means to the Market Photo Workshop and its students. Ntati Santu Mufuking is really the reason why our students can begin to speak about photography in indigenous languages and can understand what an archive really means for not only who they are, but what an archive means for the communities where we come from. And for that, we owe him a great deal. It's why we started the Market Photo Workshop Fellowship with his name for the next two years, to use not only his images as inspiration, but to use his writings and research as method to begin asking the difficult questions that he so fearlessly did of other photographic archives that we've silenced and forgotten. The 2020 inaugural Santa Mufuking Fellow, Gabi Ngobo, called him a national treasure, which we celebrate here today, but which also makes us angry. Why must our photographic heroes and their works be seen and recognized only in death? Why should they be known abroad when most South Africans have never even heard their name? Why are their contributions as photographers not collected and conserved and made public knowledge? This is what the Market Photo Workshop remains committed to, both in the training of young photographers and in the development of its own archive to become a home for archival consciousness in photography and in the spirit of a photographer like Santa Mufa King. So we'd like to end this tribute with his own words. Words that remind us that the struggle for memory continues. They come from a 2013 essay that he wrote for the last body of work that he produced before his debilitating illness. The work is of unassuming sites of burial and it is called Graves. It was also made in color, and now in retrospect feels like a kind of premonition of what was to come. The essay is called Ancestors Fearing the Shadows. It starts with an anecdote of him being called by his sister to see a snake in the distance, which he cannot. It ends with him writing, I write elsewhere that nothing forces a backward glance like a threat. The Chinese say that our body is the memory of our ancestors. This is an ominous proposition since apartheid is an impossible ancestor, inappropriate and unsuitable. Whenever we come under threat, we remember who we are and where we come from, and we respond accordingly. The word remember needs elaboration. Remember is a process by which we restore to the body forgotten memories. The body, in this case, is the landscape on whose skin and belly histories and myths are projected, which is central to forging national identity. When I see turbulence, my sister sees a snake. As a photographer, I hunt for things ephemeral, such as shadows, in order to create images. Interpretation, I leave to the beholder. Thank you. Thank you very much, Candice. Um, I'd like everyone who comes, just introduce yourself. Um, yeah. I'd like to say, I can say a lot about Santu. I've known Santu from the early 90s. And I remember, I've said it this before, that I applied for the Mother Jones uh, Fund. And little did I knew that Santu also applied for it. And eagerly, I was waiting, and then Santu got it. And I said, I must meet this guy. And I, I called him. He was at Vets. I was working for the, the weekly mail. I said, no, sure, come through and bring your negatives. Went to see Santu. You know, proudly with my negatives as a young photographer. Shoo! I got slaughtered by Santu. <laughs> Shoo! And he asked me, can I see your negatives? I showed him my negatives. And he said, what is this? That's Santu. What is this? 
I, I, I don't remember if I answered him, but all I remember till today was that I didn't see my, my because I walked from the mailing garden, it was in Bromfontein. I walked from Vets to the mailing garden. How I got there, I don't know. And I didn't want to be a photographer. But as time went by, but I still admired his work. But yeah, Santu was, he didn't mix his word. He would tell you as it is, and he would just laugh. Laugh it off and, you know, that's it. I wrote something uh, yesterday, said, I have known you from the early 90s and have been a fan of your work ever since. You are a rare breed and mastered your craft very well. You were, one, you were one of a kind with a funny sense of humor. You spoke your mind openly and most of the times with a very sharp tongue. We traveled a few times for exhibition overseas and all, all you will always disappear. We will talk about projects that you are doing and the way you ask questions um, was funny and followed by a laugh. But you did most of the talking with cigarette on hand and a beer somewhere around and talking about um, Charlie Parker. He loved the, the gem session, Charlie Parker. And this, I will remember Santu with it. I said, rest in well and your legacy will live on. This moment, I'd like to call a Morris Isaacson Alwin Nye, that they surrendered. Is it here? My name is Dimape Serenyani. So we were all Morris Isaacson students. It's so difficult to talk about Santu. You never really know where to start, what to say and what not to say, because of the consistent paradoxes in Santu's life. Santu was something else. When Santu first came here, we had just done our JCs. And we were in this JC class, and our principal was Matabate. And Matabate had a way of selecting students from other schools. As long as you got your JC first class, you could come into that class. If you didn't get do that, no, no 30 percenters would ever have entered Morris. <laughs> but anyway, um, there was this guy who came, I think he came from Maseke. That was Santu. Santu was very, very quiet, highly reflective you know, in approach. And uh, I remember the first really well-constituted class was our English class, which was handled by Mems Kosana at that stage. Mem Kosana stayed at the house, the caretaker, on that side of the school, and on this side of the school, it was Fanya book. And Mems Kosana gave us work, homework, the very first day we had to come back and talk about what we will be reading privately. I don't know if the kids do that these days. We will be reading privately. Santu came with an author that I, had, I thought I was well read at JC. He came with an author I had never known of, and, and neither did Mems Kosana know of. <laughs> that was Lopsang Rampa, you know what I'm saying? It's like, who the heck is her? Lopsang Rampa? So we started to realize there was a group of us because we started our Form 1s here. And I'm going to tell you who else was in that class. So that book that Santu was reading made us want to know who this guy is. And some of us pulled him closer to, we were kind of A team. I can see some other guys here still recognize me from here. We were the A team at that stage. That was a very, very strange class. Uh, in that class, See, it's much in years. They had been my desk mate for years and years, and he was my, my desk mate then. I remember Santu walking in. I was looking for Omrima Khwale. I don't see him here. I spoke with him this morning. He said he'd be here. And Siko Semji, well, she's in East London, and she wouldn't be able to make it. But anyway, Omri, it was winter, and Omri walks in with Santu, and they were sharing a desk. But... Uh, those days, it's so cold that when you are at assembly, you don't wear, we, we couldn't afford the blazer, some worries. So you don't wear your blazer, you leave it in the class. And clearly these blazers are hand-me-downs, possibly the fourth one to, to receive that blazer. 
So CAC would sit there, so Omri, and at that stage, Santu, we called him Easy. He was Israel. Easy comes in with Santu, he says, I'll kill him, play, play, when I easily Omri. Maru, why did you say, ah, guy? You know? <laughs> so th these were the people that we, you know, <laughs> we, we schooled with. And then uh, Easy would really take it easy. He really took care. But in our class, as with any other class, those who couldn't really argue their points resorted to the physical part of it. Yeah? They didn't understand the thesis, the antithesis, the, the processes, the, you know, that kind of stuff. So um, <laughs> we had two such guys who came from Rockville. Tough is very, very tough. And the whole class was really afraid of these two people. And one of them, the biggest of them, Miss Soul, rest in peace. He got killed uh, in Angola. Yeah, he's one of those that the movement had to take care of for whatever reasons. Uh, had a go at Santu. Santu, I mean, the entire class couldn't believe this. Santu was very skinny, but he was wiry, not skinny. You could see that he's very strong, very very strong, and no one could quite a Santu. So not the size of that guy, or we had seen that guy deal with a few people, but not with Santu. So Santu did some kick I had never seen in any karate book, <laughs> and I asked him, man, Santu, what was that kick? He says, no, that was the Mawashigere. I don't know what it was. <laughs> and, but he missed the guy. But since that day, these two bullies never, never messed around with Santu. They could see that La Palfa, Wal Pumal Nuta, you know, so that was fun too. But anyway, just to explain to you, when someone said to me, if you want me to tell you about a person, show me the persons that this person found himself in the group with. And thereafter, show me that person with people he chose to continue, you know, being a friend. So the other one was circumstantial. You get thrown in a group and that's what it is. And uh, Santu was really, really different. At some stage, he had his exhibition here at Standard Bank, and he really hounded me, hounded me. I had to stop all client work and go and, you know, talk about Santu as to who Santu is. As we all know, it's so difficult to talk about Santu precisely because of those consistent paradoxes. Yeah? He, he was very enigmatic. That was Santu. But anyway, in that class, right at the back, there was a guy that occupied the back seat on the side of the guys. Uh, when Tokyo was arrested with a trunk full of ammunition, he was with a guy called Naledi Tsiki. Naledi Tsiki occupied that desk in that class. And uh, when the murderers uh, people that were uh, squads that were sent out by the erstwhile regime to go and kill whoever was saying things that they didn't want people to say. Uh, out there in, in France, the day that they killed Dulcie September with a bomb, in there was a lady who actually survived that bomb. That's the lady I was talking to this morning. Her name is Siko Semji, and then we call them Dombin Dombimji. Then you move on two desks uh, from Naledi and then Ndombi. Uh, you had sitting next to each other uh, Santu and Omri. You know? So, um, and Omri, I mean, at some stage, we were reading the newspapers when the movement decided to establish a commission of inquiry and send Nda Demuzunyan to Zambia and Angola to go and settle this. That's when the NC had thrown Emri in jail for years and years and years because they had had enough of whatever they had had enough of. Yeah? And then immediately in front of Omri was a guy, we called him Nigger. He was the best dancer, and then Mitsama Jaiva. When South Africa were entering into negotiations with the erstwhile apartheid regime, uh, you don't do those negotiations when you don't have Plan B. And Plan B basically was Operation Vula. 
And the guys who set the helm of Operation Vula, amongst them was a guy called Briggs Mine. That's the guy we called Nida. Yeah? He's late now. So that's the quality of people that you could find in that class. And then next to me, Frandro, I always sit Frandro, was the notice it's in Machine. I would actually get him to, you know, poke fingers at some, some people in the class. But that's the quality of people that Santu found himself in, right? And that had a lot to do with understanding where Santu came from. And later on, of course, uh, there were those of us who were very close to Santu. And then on the 5th of July 2016, when Vets uh, awarded him the ordinary do do doctorate, Myself and Lin Saramushebi, he also was going to be here, I don't see him, uh, represented our class. So we went there, Lin Mebui Tumelo, working hard as ever, you know, with her husband. Uh, so we represented Santu, but I saw something on Santu's face that day that I hadn't seen for years and years. Uh, there is a French uh, environmentalist who writes a lot about the Green Revolution. Uh, I was interested in how she defined a desert. She said the beauty of a desert lies in the fact that somewhere lies the well. There is a water well. Somewhere, that, she says, that's the beauty of the, de of, of the desert. On that day, for months on end, really on Santos' face, there was a very strange expression that was permanent, almost permanently there. It, it's an expression that didn't show any pain nor any happiness. It was like pen face, if you would call it that. It was an expressionless expression. But the day that Santu was sitting up there and then he was awarded that doctorate, I saw that smile come onto his face. Yeah? And I knew what that meant to Santu. What that meant to Santu is eventually this world has discovered my well, yeah? So that was Santu. Um, someone said, because we used to talk a lot about this thing here, how would you use a simple sentence to define Santu? It's very, very difficult uh, in defining Santu in a sentence. We used to use strange words, words like, you know, the thunderous silence, sound of silence. It's like a thunderous sound of silence. What the heck is that? You know, it's like, you know, <laughs> but that was Santu, yeah? Santu was that kind of guy that really, really uh, said very, very few words. If you thought about Santu and you thought about what sentence could he use to actually describe Santu, it wasn't really that easy because he was very, very deep. He'd use the kind of words that I've just put through and said, you know, this is the thunderous silence of sound. You paraphrase uh, uh, Aten Kafankal here, yeah? And then I spoke, as soon as I heard about this, and there's Sister Makhati, she actually called me, and I couldn't understand. Have you, she said, have you heard about Santu? I didn't know what she was talking about. And then I quickly called where I know I'd find the news. As soon as I found that, then I went on to the World Wide Web. And the first responses I got was from my ex-boss and friend, Suzette Mafuna from Canada. And I don't want to paraphrase what Suzette wrote about Santu. I have to read that verbatim, yeah? This is what she says. She says, as well as, I mean, Suzette, like her father, Mr. Drum, they really pen very well. She says, this is such a devastating news to wake up to, Dimape, Dimape is my name. She says, what a horrible loss to our nation. I have vivid memories of occasion when I bumped into the skinny and harried, spelled with an A and not a U, harried young photographer whose light body always seemed weighted down by a complex contraption of photographic equipment which never left his side, his side no matter what the chaos. Dash, uh, at, at political gatherings, Regina Mundi funerals, or political rallies. Often fueled and exacerbated by the police presence or disruptions and racist dogs which aided and abated the racist system. 
Santu was the private and silent type who, was, who always seemed to revel in his own solitude. That's the Santu I knew too. He was a simple young man who was as intense and, and wise as a seasoned old Giza, says the Giza, Suzette. Yeah? <laughs> a true person's person. Santu was self-effacing and never the one to promote himself. He left his work to speak for itself. I never saw him party or living it up in fancy restaurants and popular joints. You wouldn't have met him, Makhati. <laughs> yeah, sadly, I never had an opp opp opportunity to thank and commend him for his outstanding pictures and sterling work in depicting the daily struggles of his people under an evil and racist regime, writes Suzette. She says he ruffled many feathers and therefore better recognized and feted by foreign nations and less so in his own home by his own people. Very true. Yeah? How I regret not having tried much harder and persisted in approaching and engaging him how I wish. Uh, this is the problem with pages. <laughs> yeah, you've got to keep on paging this. No, it's like we, we never knew that there were little gizmos that makes this easy, yeah? He says, I could have told him how much I admired his work ethic, which he had, Hantu, integrity, resilience, his humane spirit, and that can do no matter what attitude that Santu always had. May the rays of his spirit and integrity forever be a guiding light on those left behind and continue to struggle from, and encourage them to continue struggling from poverty, from unemployment, and the machinations, machinations of our very dysfunctioning and disappointing majority government. He ends. That was Suzette writing about Santu, and, uh, pardon? Yeah, yeah, so that the stray bullet like Santu was, yeah? And uh, so when I heard this as well, I live in Paris, so I called a nephew of mine who had met Santu once. And strange thing happened on that day. We were walking from Mshengu Shabalala, Mufulo, to Rockville, Rockville would go to White City. We couldn't afford the taxis, expensive things. Those. And no, there were no Ubers then either. Yeah? So anyway, it's me, Santu, and Mueti. Mueti is this uh, uh, nephew of mine. And a dog in one of those Mufulo yards just jumped out of the yard and approached us. Mueti dashed running. I tried to run away. Santu grabbed me and says, hi, hi, Joe. You know, he used to talk like that. Ah, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. So this dog came out. The dog realized that we're not even paying attention to it. Eventually, it took his chance. Sandu repeated that kick of his. I could hear the dog chunking, and very quietly, with the tail between its legs, it went back in the yard. That's how Sandu was. You could never really, really read Sandu, but he was very wiry, very, very strong. And, uh, yeah, none of these things that people say about other people uh, applied to Santu. Santu really is, was the designer of Santu. All I can say is, may his soul rest in peace. Aman Latum Fuke. Thank you very much. I'd like to say something also about Santu. Um, when you went to uh, Biennale, when you go to the hotel, I, I didn't even know I had a fridge. But out of all the people that, we, you know, I think we were like four of us. And Santu came straight to me and said, you don't drink, hey? So all your beers every day, they are mine. And I said, okay. So that was, that was Santi. Um, so many uh, tributes have been pouring in. Um, Santi was well loved, well respected. He ruffled feathers, you know, he ruffled feathers, but we loved him, you know. Um, this juncture I would like to call a friend and a neighbor, that is Cyril.
Uh, good afternoon, and thank you for the opportunity to talk on behalf of uh, Santimu Fukeng. Uh, I, I'm not a neighbor, uh, but we grew up neighborly. Uh, he stayed at White City, I stayed at Mofolo. Um, I'd like to start by what Paul said in the book of 2 Timothy 4 7. Paul says, I fought the good fight. I finished the race. I've kept the faith. Santu was a person of faith. In 2017, he paid me a visit with his wife while struggling with his health. We had a lovely afternoon talking, you know, reminding ourselves of the past. In short, I met Santu Mufukeng in 1977. My tribute to Santu is the Santu I know or the Santu I knew. I met Santu Mufukeng through Lebuhang Samora, uh, who has just joined us. I thought he was going to arrive late. Uh, I also schooled with his beautiful wife, with Dumelet Morris Isaac Sin, where we were both recruited by Dumand Rovu after a poetry reading session organized by our SRC members at school. Other members were recruited included uh, Fanyana Mukaleng, Lebuhang Samora, who is here, uh, Libenia. Uh, we were recruited to uh, Medupi Writers Association, uh, which was a protest poetry uh, organization uh, established by uh, Mutobi Mutwasi. Funny enough, in the street, there were five active members of uh, Medupi, uh, including Vuislem Jeleni, uh, who was dating uh, the sister to Lebuhang uh, Samore. On my th second thought, I thought that it will be advisable that we named their street, Mayelula Street, uh, Santu Mufukeng Street, because it produced so much talent. Some of them are into corporate, some of them are into min mining. We are all small group of friends using different houses in Y City to daystorm about different tropics from arts, music, poetry, and lit literature. Not forgetting Masana's family house that we used as our head office, which produced the first female mayor in Soweto, our, uh, the late comrade M. Puisang Masite. All these houses became responsible for shaping our different careers. Not forgetting to mention the family of our sister, Miriam Tlali hosted us at Roville for our poetry workshops before we moved to our permanent Medupe home at YMCA Orlando DOCC at Amda UC's offices. This is the place where Santu met and proposed his wife, Bustumelo, and the rest was history. The relationship was kept private between this 18-year-old fearless firebrand poet that we joined other members of Midu who has just joined other members of Midupi Writers Association work workshop led by the feared, uh, by the apartheid system, Honorable Mutobi Butwasi, Butwasi, our poetry outreach fundraiser that enabled us, to enabled us to travel to neighboring countries like Botswana, Swaziland, and Lesotho doing poetry until we got detained and banned in, in 1977. Uh, strange enough, uh, as we grew up, uh, we took different directions. I went to study fine arts in Natal, Rockers Drift. On my coming back, I was with Santu. Uh, this is the landmark of Santu's career in 1977, his photography, uh, how he started moving uh, with his photography. Uh, Santu used to move from White City to Mufolo Arts Center. Uh, we had a small dark room there. And then as uh, the head of the art department, uh, we decided that we should give him the dark room to run for the students. And then he also came with some of his colleagues. I see some of his early friends that he worked with at high school as a young photographer. Uh, I see Mpafi, say Mpafi, I'll be very much appreciated if you can stand up uh, so that we can just honor you. It's very special. He played a very important role in the life of uh, uh, Santu and also Johnny. Johnny, unfortunately, Johnny is not around. And then we've got uh, Samore. Lebuhang also contributed his life in literature. Lemul Samore may kindly stand up. And then we've got Pala too. Pala, I'll very much appreciate if you can also stand up in that day. Uh, these are the people that uh, I can say really shape uh, the life of Santu. Uh, further than that, mm, there's a lot that I can talk about uh, Santu until the sun sets. Uh, let me just skip. Uh, the sad part, I'm moving to the sad part uh, of uh, Santu's life now. Um, I've discussed this uh, with a wife, uh, that it is very important that people's People must know something about Santu. Uh, Santu was raised from a humble
with a mother who worked as a laborer, with many siblings in the house, to such an extent that some of them were not well. Uh, some of them contracted TB during that time. It was a very, very sad time for Santu. Uh, that's why I said Santu is a person of faith. But Santu never got discouraged. He followed his vision. Uh, Dr. Santu beat all the odds and followed his vision to be one of the greatest photographers that this country has produced. And, was and he was respected over the world for his talents. And they were staying uh, in the same street with other MDP members. Uh, we also had other members uh, like Chris Magheza, who relocated to Pretoria. Uh, other landmarks in his career. When Santu was young, he so much wanted to have a Leica camera, uh, which eventually uh, he managed to get one. And then I remember we were traveling with students. We were going to Kruger, uh, Kruger's Dope, uh, Lion Park with one of the students who's here, uh, Kenneth Nkosi. And then we did a lot of photographing in that area. But unfortunately, uh, one of the students uh, bent the film. We don't know what happened. He was so mad because all the documentary disappeared. So people who know Santu, you can understand what could have happened there. Okay, uh, further than that, uh, Santu used to be very thirsty and very energetic. When Santu did not have a film in his camera, he would start uh, shooting landscapes. He will create a box and then he'll open a hole in that box and then he'll put a, he'll put a cello tape in front, actually a dark one. And then from there, he'll put a paper in that box. And then he'll just open it and shoot the landscape at Mufulo Park. And then we'll come back in the dark room and started developing some of those beautiful landscapes. And then we'll also put some feathers on some of the printing paper. And then we'll start uh, 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 printing images uh, in the dark room. That's how determined he was. Uh, further than that, when I got married uh, in 1995, he saw the opportunity to uh, practice his, his skill and to develop his skill because I bought so much film, uh, but he never got satisfied. Uh, he never got satisfied. Before my, wed my wedding started, he told me that he was running out of film. I said, how come? Because he drove from here to Joburg, he said he was photographing along the way. What do I expect? <laughs> Uh, nevertheless, fortunately, I had a, a bulk film because I knew that he had a big appetite for filming, which was in black and white. And then he started uh, munching that uh, bulk film within no space of time. The films were finished. And then it was so sad because the film, we, we had a budget for two weeks because my, my, my wedding took two, two weeks. Uh, the first wedding uh, happened in Zanin, in Lipombo. And the next wedding was supposed to start in Johannesburg. So I was waiting for... Uh, Santu to arrive uh, on my wedding day, and uh, Santu was nowhere to be found. Uh, I never knew that he has exhausted some of the feelings that he had with him, you know. <laughs> so when he phoned me, I said, Santu, why did it take such a long time? He said, man, I'm sorry, you know, I forgot I used some of the films, you know, and we're going to be run out of fil films, you know, but you don't have to worry because I've seen at the art school there are some films that we can fetch. Can we fetch them and compensate to say to you? I said, no, that's fine. You can go ahead. Uh, without a waste of time, uh, I would like to say these few words uh, uh, to the family as a tribute. These are my last words. Um, yeah, I'll be done. Don't worry. Just be patient. Uh, <clears throat> strange thing about Santu, he uh, also loved literature. Uh, I remember one day uh, we were at uh, Amdayusis at the DOCC where we were reading poetry. He started uh, reading poetry in French. You, can, can you imagine? You are, a, you, are, you are born in Soweto. Where did he learn French from? I don't know. He mixed his, his English with French, and then we all stand, you know? And then we say to Sant, what were you talking about? He says, no, it's high time you must learn French. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the story. And then he had this amazing friend that they used to debate a lot from time to time. I think you still remember him. His name was Mapita. Now and then they would have arguments, you know, for very, very, very long hours. And then I remember uh, when we did uh, the, Mind the Midupi uh, Memorial at Uncle Tom's Hall, uh, our guest was uh, Dr. Ayukwe Ama, uh, the Ghanaian writer, uh, we also that we worked with in the suit with poetry. Uh, I was so impressed when I saw his son, Kamu, uh, that he also took the talent from his mother and father. He was just mesmerizing us with poetry. Uh, I hope he'll also do that with the lens that the fathers have left behind. Uh, finally, may Santu Mufukeng rest in peace. Uh, we loved you very much, uh, Santu. Uh, to Witumel and the family wish you a peaceful closure. May the Lord's angels guide you and protect you. 
I am because you are, you are because I am. That is the slogan that a son used to love. Go on, son, and join the grace, and lie in the bosom of your creator. Do not be afraid. God has been with you, and he'll always be with you eternally. Rest in peace. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I think most of us photographers, we have a favorite of one's work. And my favorite from Santu is Chasing Shadows and the Train ch Churches. Um, Santu did a, a few projects that I can really mention. Uh, Chasing Shadows was Santu's personal ex exploration of nation's pers personhood. He also did the Black photo album, Look at Me, dated from 1890 to 1950. Um, the project included a collection of urban black, working and middle class families in South Africa between 1890 and 1950. Um, he did the train churches, he did the billboard series focused on ad advertisement and people who live around them. He also did the radical landscapes and eyes wide shut. Um, at this chance, I'd like to call Paul, who also was a founding member of Afropix and yeah, a friend to Satu. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, I'm old school, I don't have a cell phone. <laughs> my, my heart reaches out to you, to me, Kanu and Sadi and the larger Mofoking family and friends in this difficult time as we gather to remember Santu Mofoking. At some point early in our relationship, I said to Santu, Ngingu Paulo, Ngivele Tegwe. He laughed for a long time. <laughs> that was Santu in a, net, in a nutshell. To imagine me as a Zulu migrant worker, he found really funny. He loved to turn things on their head and then see the light side of the bizarre country we live in. And as you know, there's no shortage of that in our beloved country. From then, from then on, for him, I was always Paulos. Santu joined the Afropix Agency and Collective in 1985. It was a non-racial group of photographers who took a stand against the apartheid system and became a vehicle for the alternate press, the political activist movements of the time. Santu had until then been working for the Transvaal as a darkroom assistant. It was a paying job, but a tough one for such an expansive spirit and a creative person. In retrospect, we were a source of liberation for him. We were a mad bunch of bohemians, malkopa, hippies, radicals, strays, waifs, <clears throat> alternatives, creatives, who shared a common vision to do whatever we could with our cameras and not only to document the society around us but to bring down that oppressive system we lived in. So it goes without saying for those who knew Santu and who've heard more about Santu now, he fitted in perfectly because he was just like the rest of us, not lacquer. He became a much loved and highly respected member of the family. On one Friday afternoon, Santu and I were sitting in the Afropix office, then based in Khotsa House before it was blown up, chewing the fat. Santu is exactly the same age as I am. <clears throat> and by then we had become close friends through the path of many arguments, debates, and lots of humor. And it dawned on us that while we shared so much in common, we were about to leave our different, to our different homes defined by the circumstances around us, divided by segregation and apartheid. It spurned the project Going Home, where for many years, Santu focused his lens on his roots, Soweto, and I on my hometown, Peter Maritzburg. Santu went to, on to produce seminal work that Ruth has just spoken about um, and took photography to new heights, trained churches, the Blumhoff series, casting sh chasing shadows, amongst others. Santu once said, photography for him was like an autobiography. To the lives of ordinary black South Africans, 
He brought poetry, lyricism, compassion, intimate fragility, and a profound sense of humanity in a time of great inhumanity. He did this in a period when South Africa made the headlines for most of a decade. He wasn't interested in statistics, even though he, he uh, worked uh, for the new nation. He wasn't interested in head counts. He wasn't interested so much in the news of the day. His passion was to reflect on the lives of his people and the communities with whom he shared a common journey. In doing so, Santu's work will, Santu will be remembered for his extraordinary insights and beauty he was able to share and immortalize through his photographs. He was an insider who captured people with great sensitivity, dignity, respect, and perspicacity. This is the gift Santu gave the country, the continent, and the world. These powerful searing and engaging Im images that will li live on for eternity. I'd also just like to read a statement from Omar Bacha and Cedric Nunn, who were also part of the Afropix Collective. It is with great sadness and regret that we mark and mourn the ultimate death of our co colleague, untimely death of our colleague and friend, Santu Mofeking. We, as former Afropix colleagues, remember him with great respect, admiration, and indeed love. The camaraderie and contribution Santu brought to our collective and agency. We remember also the laughter and the joy that accompanied Santu's spirit in our gatherings and day-to-day -day encounters. This is a time of great tribulation. This is a time of great tribulation and sacrifice, which he himself experienced, experienced more than most. Santu went on to distinguish himself in South Africa and the world as a great visionary and artist for which we are very grateful and proud of his achievements as they elevated both himself and South African photography and art globally. His exceptional contributions will long live on as a testimony to his great spirit and talents. We send our greetings and well -wished, our well wishes to the family and friends of Santu and solidarity and support in their time of bereavement and grief, in the knowledge that as great as the pain of his passing is felt, so too is the surety of a life well lived, and the immensity of his contributions will ensure that he is remembered for generations to come. I have been privileged, especially blessed, to know Santu and his family, to be his colleague, and most of all, his friend. Hambagatli in Fuerto Santo. Thanks, Paul. One of the tributes that poured in read Documentary photography has lost one of its brightest stars. Santu belonged to a committed generation of photographers that gained prominence in the alternative media in the 80s and 90s. The series is on train and churches. Salute. At this juncture, I'd like to call Andrew, uh, a friend to Santu. And yeah, Andrew Chabangu. Um, one of the gifts I think in life is to is to love and love your people. I think uh, Sandu loved his people uh, dearly in in a very strange way. Mova was a very strange person as well. So um, we're not going to be. Um, Photoshopping with Santu as a as a nice person <laughs> so, um, um, to be with him really and truly. You follow me in a black. See that's a guama guama man. 
I think the year was, uh, I can't remember, and when was it? It was um, uh, 95 or so. I had gone to a uh, university where Sand was working at the time. But at the time, who, but I had gone there to listen to Ungungu Waitiongo because Ungungu Waitiongo was having it at an e lecture lab. And then at some point, but the, the lecture was in the same building as, as, as the Ungungu. And I bumped to Sand, whom I've met uh, previous time, previous days. And um, you, you know, we extended the pleasant risk of being nice to each other. Of grand um Jojo, you know, Baba Baba Ganja, Lotu Uchunangi, Ubatangi, you know, what do you want here? And so, for, for my English friends, and you know, especially my brother, you know, and um, then I know I'm coming to listen to Brother Ngongi's studying because uh, personally, and how I became, uh, I, I like the arts, was through Ngungi Waitiongo. Uh, I've read his book, uh, I'll Marry and I Want, in 93, no, no, 83 or two, something like that, in those early ages. And then at the time I was, studying, uh, I was in high school and then I was studying State of Emergence. Um, but to, 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 to read that against, I think, superface that against the state of machines was kind of like you have a mantra for some of us. And uh, yeah, then when Gungu was in South Africa, then years later, uh, I had to go there and to, to listen to him. Then, Sangan uh, Hotman, Ruchunangi, what you want, and so forth. And then, okay, after that, you can come and see me, whatever. That was the uh, beginning of a long journey uh, for me, no? uh, for me personally. Uh, I don't know the journey that I enjoy or journey that I think that I've been cast with uh, at the same time. Um, he loved dearly. He loved his people dearly. And Upon hearing that um, I lost my father when I was very young, I think I was almost eight months old, we were in a car accident, but unfortunately my father didn't survive, and Santu knew about it. And, and he promised and said, let's pay tribute to him. And there's this particular music me and Santo used to listen to uh, by this guy from West Coast in the States. Uh, I've forgotten his name, but the name of the, 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 the name of the CD was that they were in my father's house. And then Santo decided that they, we should do tribute to our father and I'm going to call it uh, in my father's house. But, uh, but uh, that you didn't know, that you don't know. Me and Sunday, basically shy, blind. <laughs> Where they were bosom friends. Um, for, for my English friends, were, we drink a lot, me and Sunday. <laughs> um, um, uh, at, at the time, at the time, I think that in his favorite dating, was he that in, like, not, not as kind of Lyon that is, just came back now, but Lyon at some point was that in, kind of was not there. Um, it's a bit like I want to know Santos. Oh my God, oh my God. And then, and then, and then we used to, uh, and, and, and that, you know. And then uh, at some point, it was like a, a ritual for, for Bina. Um, uh, must figure, I want. But at the time we used to work at uh, Everett's. Um, are, are you okay? <laughs> are you sure? <laughs> uh, are, you, are, are you really sure? But I'm not sure. And then I thought I'm by. 
<laughs> going by, you know, and uh, they all went by. This uh, I don't know if that bottle is closed now, you know. Yeah. The first ever exhibition that I have ever had in my life was uh, Bamako, the second uh, the, the uh, second Biennale at Bamako, and he curated it. Uh, like Ruth was saying, uh, that I bring your negatives, and I'll bring my negatives. <laughs> and that I look at me, do you edit your work? <laughs> With that smile, smile, whatever that meant. <laughs> you know, do you edit your work? <laughs> what's editor's but somehow? <laughs> you know, the, no, I don't know. I didn't know what editing mean myself because uh, I'm like. Any at the time, maybe not now, like any black child wouldn't have the opportunities. So if you're going to ask me, are you editing? What is it? What are you saying to me? <laughs> Ex if with him, ex at least he was fortunate because he was, he was at Vets. But what do you mean I'm editing my work? You know. So I went that thing to, to Bamako and that thing. It was, what, what was it, 1996, the, sec, the, the second edition. Uh, I dare to say to you, uh, I'm not being that thing arrogant and so forth, but um, my exhibition was well received. Yes, Beyond my, that thing, uh, be, uh, because of him, you know, seriously. Seriously, and uh, surprising as well that uh, we'll have like your Europeans photographers and that. Uh, I thought, oh, and who can you come and look at my portfolio? <laughs> I just come from so I didn't know what the portfolio is, you know. <laughs> you, know then, uh, you know, I didn't even know what the portfolio is at, at the time. They said, no, all I did. I need to, I need, I, I need a beer actually, not your portfolio. <laughs> you know, and, um, um, I went to Paris or somewhere in France a, a year later. Um, also, same show curated by him. And, uh, you know, People, pleasantries, very nice to me. Ooh, and roo, and roo, and roo. Ooh, oui, 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 oui. Oui, ça va, ça va, ça va. <laughs> and, um, but there's this one person who, who came to me and said to me, Andrew, you're too young to be taking this kind of pictures. I said, what do you mean? And you're too young. It's too deep. It's too young. And uh, I, I had uh, my. Uh, I hope that there's no underage wedding. I had my, I had my friend, a lady friend at the time. <laughs> uh, she said to me, "Maybe it's right and wrong." Maybe it's right and wrong. I said, maybe you should be with him. <laughs> you know, maybe you should be with him. No, I didn't mean to say that. And who, who, we, we. And then I came back in South Africa. We met with Tameroon. We used to call him Sandu Tameroon. We met with Tameroon. And then I then explained that it's okay that that's how things work, you know, this blah blah blah. And this you know, people liked my work because also I was young I was young then, you know, then as, as a young person. You you we in love with this idea that you should be admired, you should be appreciated and that and so forth, you know. And and it does not do this is son, but it was one particular person who said this. And he said, yeah, I think that one, that particular person should be your friend. Dad, you too, son, too, I came in this grief, brother, <laughs> you know. Yes, he said, yes, this is the thing, you know. 
the hot money young pet, grand grand. Grand grand, you know, is telling good nonsense, you know. But what I didn't know, what I didn't appreciate, that I was being prepared for later in life to be able to deal with critics, criticism, uh, with whatever you call. But at the same time, not to be drunk by praises when the time comes. Um, I come here, I speak in, here in front of you, people of God, that uh, saying nice things about Santu as a brother of mine. But there was a time in our life, uh, my son and myself, we were estranged from each other, not talking to each other. And then to make sure, I think it was conscious or unconscious, that if he walks on that ladder on the street, we make sure that um, our paths don't meet. It was that, that, that. It's almost two years or so, not talking to each other. Um, when I heard that, I was like, maybe, probably, maybe I don't know. But, but, there was a time when we found at each other. I think in my life, it was the longest hug that I ever had, or embrace, if you call it. And then we hugged each other and do that thing. Hey, how are you, brother? Are you okay? Are you good? How are your kids? We don't, we don't talk about photography. We talk about this embracement, the longest embracement that I ever had in my life was from him saying that thing. Are you okay, brother? We need to go sharp. Oh, Grant, um, George, go fella, are you this, whatever, whatever that means. Let's say, are you okay? Are you okay? I hope, I hope you're going to be okay, my dear sister and dearest family. I hope you'll be okay. Because it's not easy for all of us. Um, He loved us dearly in his own strange ways. And then it comes through his work. Uh, because you cannot take that particular photographs if they don't love your people like that. I was concerned, deeply moved, and then understood most of the people, uh, 76, Connolly Group was 76. La. Most of the people, 76, the, the face of 76 would say it's a uh, machine. Uh, nobody talks about the Santos and other people. But even Santos himself, he never spoke about his involvement uh, around that time. So I hope the young people here, where are the young people? Can the young people stand up? Oh, they're not here. Yeah, I'm saying this. I'm saying this because our top thinkers are going home. They're leaving us, and sometimes we don't know, and sometimes we cannot accept that they're leaving us. But our top thinkers have, have been replaced by top tweeters. <laughs> You know, and therefore I hope uh, they, they, they hear, and then I hope, and then we're saying, as a saying, as we say, but uh, wait, can I ask you as well one thing, except the family, to stand up for one minute, if you can, if you want, if you don't want, it's okay, it's too. <laughs> now, yes. We just want to say to our brother Santu, 
We love you dearly. And I just want to say to him, thank you so much. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for your gift. Thank you for being a father. Thank you for being a, 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 a wife. Uh, 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 what was that? Uh, a, a husband. And uh, thank you uh, for me when I had lost my own father. Through him, I got a father. I got a brother. Uh, may his soul rest in peace. Umoya wake mo tumuli ngo kolo utando wake lugas bon salon ngati ngakubega si guiti ngazonge kat siabo. Thank you, Andrew. Um, one time I was at the office at the Weekly Mail, and I didn't see Santu for, for a while, because I know, you know, when you see Santu, it's going to be a fight, you know? And then he called me, say, hey, you, you don't come to vets anymore. I said, no, 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 I'm busy with assignments. I'm working. I said, okay, just make time to come. I said, fine, I'll come on Friday, because... Um, Fridays was um, off deadline. And then I went to see Santu. He was busy in his office. And then first thing that he said to me, he said, you know, do you know Gasmaine? I said, who? <laughs> you know Santu? I said, no. And then he gave me a book, The Seed is Mine, by, by Charles Van Onsel, and said, Go find Kasmaine there. And I read it, you know? But I mean, me as a photographer, how would I know about Kasmaine if somebody didn't tell me? But this was sent to. So I had a book, The Seed is Mine by, Kasmai, uh, by Charles Van Nonselen, given to me by, by Santu. I'll remember him with that. Um, I'd like to call Lindo Gutle, one of the students that really we're close to Santu to give us some word. Sorry, if anybody needs a bathroom, it's on the left towards that side. Uh, I think I was one of the privileged uh, young student who have uh, met Otato Santu. I think it was in, in high school when, uh, when I'd organized to meet up with him and then I prepared like uh, <clears throat> and then I prepared like uh, a bunch of good photographs which I thought was like my best work trying to impress uh, Tetu Santu because I knew of his work while I was in high school. Uh, and then I, 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 I met him and uh, I told him that I don't have money going back home. He said, okay, let's look at your work. Um, he looked at four photographs and he, he threw my pictures down. He's like, Lino uh, Kushi. <laughs> What have you written? <laughs> and I was like, uh, nothing. Uh, well, I mean, I was still in high school and I was still, you know, learning photography. And uh, I thought, you don't have to to read or write about this. I mean, I was I was not fond of reading and writing. He said, listen, there was like a pile of newspapers. He said, take those newspapers and go read, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and on my way to to the taxi rank. And then I told him, no, Prasanto, I, uh, I don't have money going back home. He's like, how much do you have? I'm like, I only have one rand. He's like, oh, Lindo. And then he took out 20 rand. He's like, okay, you can go home. I take those bunch of newspapers and go read. Next time we meet up, show me what you've written and stop wasting my money. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I went home. Like I thought, you know, he was, um, you know, he was, he was just being mean, you know. And... Uh, on my way to the taxi rank, I remember, you know, 
everyone was asking me, hey man, are, are you selling newspapers? I'm like, no. And then I, <laughs> and then I, and then I dumped those newspapers somewhere. I'm like, no, I'm not going to read <laughs> those newspapers. But years later, you know, uh, that catch up with me because, um, you know, Prasant was really preparing me of, of something. And uh, from that moment, I've, I've learned a lot. Thank you. Sure, I was lucky. I'm glad I didn't get a bunch of newspapers. I got the, the seed is mine. I still have it. I'm so happy. Yeah. Um, Santi had very few friends. Well, I mean, we, we admired him, but people who could tolerate him were quite few. And, but even though, like, you know, with, his, with the attitude, but we, we liked him, but, you know, I loved him at a distance because I was scared to be, hey, yeah, Santi, but I love Santi, you know? Um, the last time, I think it's, yeah, sometime last year when I, I saw Santu, I didn't see Santu for a long time, and then when I saw him at the photo workshop, he was in a wheelchair, and I didn't even know, I broke down, and I went to see with him, and I said, you know, um, I didn't know that he was in this state, and then I said, you know, um, it's about time that we we should honor them while they're still alive, and I'm glad we did. And then, during that time, there was a friend that we tried to get from Cote d'Ivoire, who also was Santu's friend. So, um, Ananias, we, we tried, we tried to, to Skype and do whatever, it, it just didn't work. So this time, and then knew that, okay, Santi's gone, and then, you know, he has to come. He was applying for a visa. He got a visa very late, but he got it, and then he tried to get a, 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 an early flight, he couldn't get a flight. I said, okay, fine. The best thing for you to do is, please write a tribute to Santi, and I'll read it on your behalf. So this is from Ananias, from Côte d'Ivoire. I've known Santu Mufuke in the legend, the great photographer, but also a man who had love to give back as a father. By the way, maybe it might sound Frenchish because he's French, okay? It's not me, it might be him. Um, a man who had loved to give back as a father, husband, or just human being. That latter aspect of him wasn't well known by people. That also was exactly what Santu was. He could show you, he could show to you, to people, what he wanted them to see of him. As a consequence, he was perceived by people, most of the time, as a strange character. I first met Santu during the first edition of Pamako Photo Festival in 1994. I was young, 24 years old. I must admit that I was like a baby photographer. At that period, Santu's career was getting known. I didn't know what he was thinking of me, but for me, he was a source of inspiration. It's only in 2006 I went to discover what he was thinking of me when I asked him if he was willing to support my application for the Beck Factory residency program. He wrote a text that he sent to me. I was very touched to hear him stating that when he saw me for the first time, he wasn't sure <laughs> that I could make, make it as a photographer. Ooh, yeah. Maybe because I looked very fragile and shy, but later he realized that he was wrong. This is how he said, he said it. Since our first encounter and several brief encounters in France and Mali, I have observed Ananias, 
some French here. I've, I have observed Ananas over developing into a very fluid energy. Uh, okay. I have observed Ananias develop into a very inquiry into human dilemma. That's French, okay? And his work has never ceased to surprise, inform, and influence my own work. Sun to intellect intellectual honesty and sincerity that, what could, that one could perceive in his work touched me and made me love him. Santu had a particular sense of humor and knew how to laugh at life. When I finally got the Back Factory residency program, before starting my photo project on Shibins, I went to meet him. We had a conversation about my project. He asked me this, uh, he asked me this question, why do you want to photograph Shibins? Since I know him, my answer was this, because I wanna be a drunker. <laughs> Santu has burst out laughing, stamping his feet on the floor, <laughs> saying to me, you have company. Well, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I spent much time with him in Paris when he was working on his retrospective exhibition, Chasing Shadows, with the Museum G. Dupont in 2011. Unfortunately, couldn't attend the exhibition as I was going to Bamako for a long period, but I kept precisely the book he gave to me with those words he wrote, Ananias, if you try and fail, it teaches you not to try, just do it, is what I believe. Wish you all the best in life. I always ex express my feelings to brother, to brother Andrew Shabangu, his godchild, that I would have wanted to have a godfather like Santu in Côte d'Ivoire, my country. The photographer Santu Mufukeng was definitely an asset for South Africa. In 2008, I went to visit him in Bez Valley, where he used to live, and Butumelo just zoomed in and out to give him, book, give him a book. Then he told me that she was the mother of his children. While he was saying that to me, his eyes were sparkling and he was acting shy. <laughs> I, then, I then asked him, are you still in love with her? He, ans he answered back to me was, why are you asking me that question with a laugh? During a short visit in Johannesburg in 2016, I saw sound too, he was slowly losing his speech, but he could still send text messages. He clearly expressed that he wasn't in, in peace and that he wanted his family back. I was so glad to discover that via Facebook that the family finally was reunited. That was his last wish that he shared with me. Having his family around him, Santu needed love to soothe his soul as well as he had some to share as a father, husband and friend. I feel honored I met legend like him who has shared with me some episodes of his life. I express my gratitude to Buitumelo and his children of having let his last project release to his family be a reality. May Santos Mufuken's significant and relevant legacy that he has just left to Africa and the world continue to live. That's from Ananias. <laughs> I'd like to call a one of the, the one who is going to represent the nieces and nephews to pay a tribute. Good afternoon to all. It's such a difficult thing to stand here and talk about my uncle. As sad as it is, I'm glad that we are celebrating his life. Malume Andrew, thank you for coming here and sharing your stories. Um, you've made it easy for us as a family to celebrate him. Um, it's difficult to talk about Malume Sand. I now recently call him Dr. Malume Sand. Um, Malume Sandu 
to us as Bachana, he was a giver. You know, people talk about black tax. Maluma Sant is one of those people that suffered greatly from black tax because we would go to him and he was there for us. He was a cook. I remember he said to me, meaning I'm going to cook today. And he bought fish heads to make soup. And we pretended that we enjoyed the meal and it was the worst meal I've ever, <laughs> I've ever had. But I had to pretend that it was nice. I mean, because he put his heart into it. Um, Maluma Santu, as you guys described him, is who I know him to be. He was a reader. I stayed with him when I was doing my matric, and every time I would sit and watch TV, he would come and say, Weza. And why don't you read? And I would say, I don't know what to read. You know, he had books that were sitting there. I have so many books and you can't say to me, how not you book, you can't read. I'm so blessed to have him as my uncle. And I'm grateful to hear you guys talk so, so great of him. Malume Santu, when he moved, he was, um, was full of life. He had a great sense of humor, and people that know him would know that. I mean, he would laugh. He had just an infectious laughter that he would laugh and, you know, do this and laugh. And, and, and you know, it would, it would grow and everybody would just feel his presence. He also was a straight talker. He never minced his words. He would tell you what he thinks, and whether you like it or not, <laughs> we'd leave you like that, but he would tell you the truth. Um, when Malume first moved into um, Dara House, by then moving into town was a big thing. Pela Malume Waruna was a big person. We would look up to him, we loved him, we thought, yo, oh, to have him, yeah, it's a great thing. And then he would say, I'm moving to Dara House to the last floor. I'm not sure what floor they stayed in. Yeah, 19th floor. So that Baloi, Baskam Tola. That's who he was. he was. He had such a great sense of humor. Um, Malume Sandu was really a deep person. He was a man of little words. He never said much to us, but he would give us advice. There's two things that I would never forget that he taught me. He used to say to me, Leila, if there's one person, if you do something in life, do it to the best of your ability. If somebody gives you a job and say polish shoes, you polish them to the best of your ability. And I'm glad to hear that everybody here was talking about his perfectionism. He was a perfect, like he, he would never, um, how do I put it? He, he wanted his things to be done perfectly. That's who he was. Um, it was so sad to see Malume Agula, a man who was so self-sufficient that now he could not do things for himself. Even when we wanted to help, we didn't know how to help him. And then it's Malume Joyce, when he came back to Malume's life, it was a blessing to us as family. Because we didn't know what to do for him. We didn't know whether to leave him early one, to do what, because the following morning you would hear Malume has fallen. Malume was walking and he fell. You know, all these stories was heartbreaking. So Malume Joyce, I'm grateful that you came back and you agreed to get married again <laughs> to Malume Waga. And I'm glad that I witnessed that wedding. Malume texted me and said, can you be my witness? And I remember I went to him and I said, Malume, I need to talk to you and find out how many to Anyala. And he did answer me back. We texted each other and he said to me, yes. Leila, I'm marrying, I need my family back. And he has his family, and I don't know how else 
he would have done this. I don't know what we as family would have done without family Ahai back into his life. Thank you, Malume, and thank you, Ralebo. Mudimu Awente Hand. There's so much I can say about Malume, but um, I'd rather not talk much about him. The only thing I want to say is to say, rest in peace, Malume, Dr. Malume Mufukeng. Mufukeng, Wahadijana, Kemutu, Wama Mulana, Mutlaadla. Mutu, Wama Huja, Mutlanyana, Oletala. <laughs> Rest in peace, and I hope um, what everybody has said to you, Malume, it love for Jesus, and it will heal all of us. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. I think we are on time. Yeah, on time. Um, we were scheduled to watch videos, interviews about Santu, but I think this, this place is not adequate for, to, uh, for us to do that. Um, and now I'd like to call Nsari to give us a vote of thanks. Um, Papa would probably be disappointed with this delivery of the vote of thanks because he always said you must be precise in what you say, you must say it perfectly, do it the very best you can. But I think I was thinking so much about him today, I didn't think about what I'd say when this moment came. Um, we as a family have been comforted, we have had opportunities to laugh, and to reflect on our father and our husband and uncle and to share in the joy of the friendships that he's had over the years, to see him in all of his facets through the love that has been poured out in this week, in the, in the years before where people have come to visit us in our homes, from the times when he's always taken us to be with his friends and to be in the company of the people that he always loved and cared for. Papa did really love and loved fully and deeply and beyond even our own abilities to perceive what his love meant at any given point. We... are so blessed to have had somebody who was bigger than we could conceive and through all of the love and the individuals who have reached out to us, even our own understanding of our father has expanded. Um, we are richer and fuller for all the care that has been shown to us in the past while. And it was with great sadness that we said our final goodbyes yesterday. And we don't even know yet the depths of that sadness. Um, but we hope that that which he's shared with the world will continue to live beyond him. He was a man who cared very much for his legacy. You know, I think um, Papa was not meant just for this time. Um, he will be here long after. Um, and, and, and that is a difficult thing to fathom and live in the shadow of his children. But we take the lessons that come from it. Don't try, do. Do everything you do to your very best. He always said you should, you should lead and they will follow, you know? Um, and sometimes he thought, oh, dad is so arrogant. But I think really he was light years ahead of us. Um, he, was, he was more than we could perceive. And so we are grateful from the bottoms of our heart, from the depths of our souls, to all of you, to those who wish to be here, who couldn't be here but really for everybody who touched Papa, who walked beside him in this life, who laughed with him, who shared moments with him, shared a beer, read a book, um, who argued with him, 
who took his very serious stance and swallowed it. <laughs> um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dumela, Naki Musut, Akizimis Ho, but Kibata Hua, but was Kiba Bumak, Ababuin Nit Lanku Hotla has time a choice of the Miniaro. Officials a con. I fit a lacona, Abu Ahore, Nalisan to Ralea Hutlenda. God, my question was. How can you marry Santu because Santu is cool at the moment? Why is it to sign any Santu? Cool. Abar little believe that our Santu are totally chilled. Then Rachel is coming. Wow. Get her to sign. Because no, no, I can't do it.